ladies and gentlemen, SCI friends and a lot of colleagues, welcome to this third open SCI science forum. The first thing to do is not, skip my name, Johan Schillenschana, Executive Director SCI, but I want to put this one up. We are here to work. This is the hashtag. So within 10 minutes, we have to be number one on this famous list showing that, you know, so please now start, yeah, now it starts. I'm here. I'm really excited. It's going to be so great. I gave you the tweets, okay? Just start. You don't have to listen so much to what I'm saying. So that's why you can use these 10 minutes tweeting. The rest of the conference, please listen in. We're going to have a lot of colleagues here. This forum is actually an internal meeting to many, in many ways. This is where we gather all these amazing colleagues we have around the world. Uh, we have about 200 colleagues around the world. 100 of them are here uh, in Stockholm this week to work, to discuss, to really look into our science, the thinking, what is happening in the world, how we can work together, how we can work in different ways together, how we can be at the front line, how we can secure that we are focusing on the right issues, the real problems, but also looking for solutions. But then we decide that one day, one of these days in this week, we open up a little bit and we invite our friends, our guests, uh, to attend and also participate in panels, to challenge us, to discuss with us, not just in here on the stage, but also in the breaks. So I really would like to welcome, not least, also all our external guests here today. It's interesting because what I've learned in SCI after five years is the enormous diversity of staff. Social scientists, natural scientists, economy, law, you know, everything. Typically for sustainable development. Sustainable development is not a discipline. It's the whole bloody thing. So you need really to gather all these different you know, competences and people to talk about these issues and kick their heads together a little bit. And we can see from the audience that we have, all the guests that are here, that you are the same. You're also coming from so many different um, perspectives in society, from civil society, from government, uh, from business increasingly, which we also appreciate very much, from academics. Um, so it's a diverse audience as well. It doesn't make sustainability easier, as you know. We always say that we all we have to involve our stakeholders and it's sort of presented in a way that it will make life easier. No, it doesn't. It's much easier to decide yourself what is the best way forward. But it, the sustainability of decision making, the sustainability of solutions require the fact that all different competences and disciplines work together. 2015 is an important year. We, we tend to stress that. It's a good year for our business. Because we have all these SDGs, we have COP, climate, we have the finance for development coming up. So it's really at the center of what we do. Um, and that is important, of course. A lot of people tend, not least from our own community, to say, this is the most critical year in humanity. If we fail this year, the world will come to an end. I don't believe in that. Honestly, I really want to have strong agreements in New York in September, in Addis in July, and in Paris uh, in December. And by the way, also at the UN Habitat conference next year, and probably you know, another couple of conferences the next couple of years. Of course we need the multilateral system to really come together and make decisive decisions. But I don't think it's going to be the end of the world if they don't. We already have a lot of change processes taking place. Um, and if the multilateral system fails, I'm sure that there will be many other actors there to still pick up the speed, to really take the agenda forward. Our aspiration is, of course, that this should not be the case. Instead, that we should be able to work from a very concise, clear international agenda, well-financed, well underpinned by science, and with a lot of commitment from key actors. But if it doesn't work out in the end, all these committed actors will still be there and work. And science will continue to be as important as the science policy interaction. So let's all work for 2015 to be a success. But let's also make sure that if, if there are some hiccups, 
we still say we can find solutions and we can take the agenda forward. There are a couple of things actually which are interesting with this theme, or many things that are interesting with the theme of, uh, of this forum at the intersection of environment development. There is an intersection there. There is, a, there is a tension between environment development still. I was very surprised when I came out working 1996 for the first time in the UN system as a very young Swedish green oriented well, activist. Whatever, I mean, I had my climate background, climate change was already big on the agenda then. I really felt that, you know, the world needs a lot of focus on environmental issues, of course. So I came to the UN with, you know, the feeling I've got to change the world now as a 30-year-old Swedish guy. Um, and then I met the rest of the world. And my, my, my biggest wake-up was that Oh, when, so you, when you talk about sustainable development, you mean development? You don't mean environment? Hmm. That's strange. That, so that tension still exists. I mean, we have come a long way, I feel. Really demonstrating, trying to prove, showing the possibility of securing development. And not just for poverty, we, now we get rid, well, we don't get rid of them, but the MDGs were very narrow in that sense, only focusing on poverty, but trying to demonstrate the possibility of development, but also at the same time safeguarding the environment. But the tension is still there, and we need to talk about it. We need to demonstrate that it is possible. We sometimes now in a very optimistic way say, yeah, of course it's possible. It's actually worthwhile, and, and we can save the environment and still make a lot of money, and you know, everybody can be happy. And you know, it can become a little bit uh, hallelujah naivety. But uh, you know, we have to show that it's also possible with 9 billion people. And we are not there. In Sweden, we are also struggling to be a bit self-critical also. We quite often hear that we have managed to decouple our economic growth from you know, climate impact or increasing our greenhouse gases. When we tell half the story, when we don't include consumption, for instance, and trade and imports and so on, we haven't managed yet. We are far from it. And we have to be very transparent about that, I think. We still have a lot to do also in this country, even in Sweden, that actually ended up at the first place looking at global sustainability, I think, in 2013. And that makes me a bit nervous. If, that, if we are in the first place, I think it's a great country. Don't take, you know, don't take me wrong here, but we still have so much to do here as well. A long way to go. So that was a wake-up call. Um, and for me, it feels a little bit, what is amazing to come back there now and work with SEI is that that wake-up call is always existing in this organization. With our 200 colleagues representing more than 30 countries within one organization, with centers in seven countries, uh, really the tension of environment development being there all the time. Our strategy that we launched also reflects this. Um, we have quite a few copies here, so I hope you will take it uh, and bring it with you um, and read it. And that will guide us in the next coming years, in many ways. Uh, we have a lot of expectations to live up to, there's no question about it. Uh, and that is what we need to do, of course. And the science forum that we organize, we try to organize once a year, that will be a little bit of a recap and a way for you also as our guests to keep track of what we are doing or what we should do. I want to thank a few very quickly. I want to thank our SEI board. Can you raise your hands? We have a couple of board members here. They are very, they're all on that side for some reason. I don't know why, but they're a bit, you know, that, but that's the way it, the board is standing a little bit on the side, but they are very important for us and have contributed tremendously. I want to thank also the Science Advisory Council. Can you raise your hands? A couple of them here. They are actually supposed to be 11, I think, nowadays, but we have the core team here. And they have been working actively the last couple of days, really also supporting us. I want to th really thank two, we have a lot of funders, but SIDA, we have, do we have any SIDA staff here? We should have. Yeah, they are here, that's good. Who we are next week hopefully signing a new five-year agreement with, and very important for our work, and our biggest funder. Uh, and also, apart from SIDA, the Swedish government, the Ministry for uh, the Environment and Climate, and the Forum Us, 
Do we have those here? I know Formas, Ministry, also extremely important for us. But in the end, I want to do also really thank the SCI staff. How many SCI staff do we have here? Yeah, come on, that's great. <laughs> it's amazing. You're filling the room. And just end with a quote. And this time, I'm going to end with a quote from our own strategy to show you that I actually am quite proud of it. And I've selected this to say why, how SCI can succeed or why we would fail if we don't succeed with taking care and nurture our staff. Our diverse people make our organization what it is. They are our core strength and we cannot achieve anything without their dedication, professionalism, creativity and entrepreneurship. Ultimately, it is they who will drive our development and achievements in the coming years and they who will determine whether our organization can deliver on our goals and live up to SEI's mission. That's the asset we have, nothing else, apart from partners and funders and SAC and board and so on. Anyway, the final thing I had to give you...